next act, okay? Uh, Harry, introduce the next act. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Dad's a great guy. I really love him, but let's face it, the guy's a fruitcake. Did you see that guy up here? He's that's the worst case of chronic schizophrenia I've ever seen. The guy talks to himself on stage. He has like two distinct voices. You'd think there were like two people up here. What is their problem? It, look, the guy's what, 24? No. 24 years old, he still plays with dolls. Okay? Come on, grow up, Dan, okay? I love you, but seriously, you guys you guys are a little bonkers there, okay? That's okay. One of my friends will be waiting for you in the parking lot. You light up my life. You give me hope. What's wrong? Gee, uh, I don't know, Tim. It's just I've been feeling a little out of touch a little lately. Uh, Passover holidays are coming up soon, and I don't know if I can go eight whole days without a, you know, some brewski. So, hey, your worries are over. Here, try some of this. What's that? It's Nagila beer, the fine light beer with a distinctive taste of lox. Have a Nagila, have a Nagila, have a Nagila kosher beer. I'd like to bring out a little friend of mine now. Is, uh, his name is Timmy the Tooth. He's really glad to be here today. Aren't you glad to be here today, Timmy? Yeah, I'm really glad to be here today. <laughs> okay, heat up. He'd like to do a little poem for you. Okay, go ahead, Timmy. Do the poem. Okay, thanks. Teeth help us to bite and chew. Cows and fish. Ice cream, too. That is not all teeth can do. Take our pals through thick and thin. They help us to win! Thanks a lot, Timmy. That's really, really great. <laughs> okay, I'd like to, uh, very quickly, I'd like to show you uh, my imitation of orange juice. It's my imitation of orange juice. Thank you very much. Uh, it's just occurred to me that you're low calorie. When I look past your eyes, it comes as no surprise that you will always be foremost to me. And that's the way that it should be. Yeah. I like to tell you people what you're missing on TV tonight. It's uh, some great shows. You shouldn't really be here. I, just, you know, I, maybe you want to leave. I don't know. It's uh, first thing you're missing is a show. One of my old favorites, Mayberry LSD. It's, uh, t t tonight, Aunt Bong tries to convince Little Opium to go cold turkey. <laughs> Meanwhile, Duber and Otis the Junkie uh, start up a heavy metal barbershop quartet. Songs include Elton John's Take It to Mount Pilot and uh, uh, Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Emmett's Fix It Shop, which is one of my faves by the Led Zepp. Uh, how many people in, out there are into hurting each other? Art? Art? Okay, here's a show for you, Art. Uh, it's SM Magazine, week night to six. SM Magazine. Tonight, a host, Martha Vazquez, takes us to Bert and Ernie's Leather Shop, featuring, uh, specializing in harnesses for the young whippersnappers. That's a good we got uh, the Dick Cavity Show. You're missing that. Uh, tonight, Dick interviews comedian Kelly Monteith. It's uh, always fun. <laughs> There's a new, uh, a new cooking show. It's not actually a cooking show. It's a sandwich preparation show. It's called Hogan's Heroes with your host, Bob Crane. Tonight, uh, Bob teaches us how to make the club sandwich. Oh. Um, and as usual, there's the uh, a new peanut special you're missing tonight, and that's uh, you're a big fag, Charlie Brown. <laughs> Brought to you as usual by Dopey Madison, makers of hallucinogens, the small white donuts laced with LSD. Uh, I'd like to bring out a little friend of mine now. It's my uh, pet bread. <laughs> his name is uh, his name is Rido, and he's he's really glad to be here today. Uh, you're probably wondering, what's it, what's, what's it like having a, a loaf of bread for a pet? Well, first of all, it's not expensive. You might be thinking it's really expensive. It's only 69 cents for the loaf. This is good. Um, but it is $15 for shots, okay? You don't have to get shots. you got to get what, rabies, distemper, and yeast infection. 
So it's a little expensive, but after that, it's very, very cheap because you don't have to feed them. In fact, if you get hungry, you can make sandwiches. So it's pretty cheap. And you're saying, Mike, doesn't he leave little croutons all over the carpet? <laughs> well, no, he doesn't. He, he, used to leave, he used to be bad, but I had him sent to uh, bread obedience school. Bread obedience school, and now he's completely pantry trained. So all I do is like I say, bad loaf, bad loaf. And he goes on the napkin, no problem. Anyway, he learned some tricks in uh, bread obedience school, and he'd like to do them for you now. Okay, okay, righto. Sit, sit, righto. Good boy. Okay, I'd like to do another trick. Uh, righto, roll over and play bread. Good boy. Okay, I'd like to do one last trick for you. Okay, righto. Heel, heel, boy. Heel. Good boy. Here, have a sesame seed. Thank you. Hey, this party's starting to get a little dull. You know, I think it's time to bring out Mr. Microscope. Hey, Amoeba, we'll be back to pick you up later. I got this at the toy store. It's pretty weird. They send, they give you this, uh, it's a doctor kit, and they give you a little diploma on the back here. Diploma, Hasbro School of Play Medicine, Toyville, USA. This diploma certifies that, fill your name in here, has successfully graduated and is permitted to play doctor. And it's signed Dr. Hasbro. And I'm really proud of this. I'm going to put this up in my room later. Uh, <laughs> people ever see these things? Yeah. Don't you love these things? Aren't these fun? No. no? No comments on this? These are great. You know what? The good thing about these is that when you're nervous, you can, you can just twist these things a little bit. And it's... it's designed to get rid of all nervousness, tension, and everything, and, and uh, well, you know, it's supposed to make you you're less nervous because you're just supposed to turn them, you're not supposed to... Uh, okay, uh, I've, been into, I've been into a new thing lately, and that's uh, martial arts, and I'd like to do a demonstration for you now on that, so you can just bear with me a second here. Put on my, uh, my little, uh, whatchamacallit, Okay, martial arts. Okay. This one's Marshall Matt Dillon. <laughs> this one's um, Marshall McLuhan. Thank you. Hey, how many people does it take to screw in a light bulb? Anyone? Three? No, it takes two, but they have to be very small. <laughs> How many people have seen the uh, the film Dawn of the Dead? Anyone? Okay, well, looks like a lot of you haven't, so I'll explain it to you. Uh, the basic premise is that when there is no more room in hell, the dead shall walk the earth, okay? So the, the thing is, when they walk the earth, they have all the same instincts they had, when they were alive. And so, like, the, the example in the movie is that when these dead people are, walk, are, are dead, they, they walk to this shopping mall, and they just walk up and down, you know, J.C. Penney's, oh, look, you know, and they just, they're walking around in the shopping mall. So I was wondering, what would other types of people do after they were dead? Like, would, uh, would dead Harry Krishna still hang out at the airport? And uh, would dead Japanese people still go to the Grand Canyon, you know? Or... <laughs> How about dead chickens? Would they still cross the road? And what about you people? After you were dead, would you still come here for a show on Tuesday nights? And if you if you did, would there be a dead comedian like myself performing? <laughs> well, I think there would be. I think there would be, and I'm going to show you what I think it would be like, sort of. Yada yada yada. I know you're out there. I can hear you bleeding. My wife is so dead, so dead. How dead is she? She's so dead when she lays around the house, she really lays. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this guy walked up to me on the street the other day and said, I hadn't had a bite for six days, so I ate him. <laughs> I invited some friends of mine over for dinner the other night. They were delicious. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Sorry, 
sorry about that. Um, this, uh, how many dead people does it take to screw in a light bulb? It takes seven. One to screw it in and six for pallbearers. And this dead guy walks into a bar. He goes up to the bartender and he says, Look, can you mix me a half a shot each of Myers 151, light in a dark rum, a shot and a half each of coconut juice, uh, pineapple juice, orange juice, and grenadine, and float a little cherry brandy on top of that? And the bartender says, Look, pal, we don't serve zombies here. <laughs> he says, All right, making a martini. Thank you. Thank you very much.